Holy Spirit. I move to amend the agenda. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. So I will open the chair. I nominate Sadie Mercer to be the chair of the Urban Renewal Agency Budget Committee. All you have to do is run the meeting, Sadie. Such a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Are there any other nominations or now will a nomination? I nominate Kathleen Peterson for secretary. I'll second. There's a motion. Mm -hmm. Close nomination and uh, second. All that really means is. So. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, thanks. I throw me in here. Uh, so, do we? Uh, you just ask. Hand it to the finance uh, director. Uh, hand it to the finance. <laughs> okay, then I would like to turn it over to Zach. Zach <laughs> <laughs> flew the coop. <laughs> uh, You're fine, Sadie. It There's a really only had the agenda on it anyway, so I can work from that. Um, okay, so this is the annual, in, in a bit of a quirk on Oregon, Oregon budget law, this is the annual uh, budget presentation for the Seaside Urban Renewal Agency, which is a separate entity from the city, uh, even though a lot of you are the same, the same folks who were part of the park in the city. So, um, this was created in 2018 and with the main goal of um, updating the southeastern side of the city. So, so the main thing was Avenue S and the thoroughfare going up to the school and the infrastructure that that, um, that, that relies on. And so um, what happened at that point once this organization was created, just a, a refresher, most of you probably already know this, but it froze all of the taxable um, rates at that point in time for um, on page, I want to say page four here is a map of, of the, uh, the boundaries of the agency. So it froze all the tax, uh, tax rates for the taxing entities at that point in time. And then it's called what it's then uses what's called incremental financing. So any, any gross assessed values and taxable dollars that come after that go to this agency. And so for the past five years, for the most part, we've been in collections mode um, with the hope that some state funding may materialize to help us get into fixing uh, bridges and infrastructure and streets and, and the like. Um, as you'll see from, so there's four budgets within your, uh, within your book here. Uh, the first one, Seaside Debt Service, deals mainly with revenue collection. Um, and this would be the place, should, should this uh, agency take on any bond indebtedness, this is where that would go as well. Um, it transfers collections into the next page, which is the Seaside Construction Service uh, account. And so of the, of the, the seaside urban, Southeast Seaside Urban Renewal Agency, these are the two funds that we mainly are talking about. Now there's two more in your book. Uh, from the last urban renewal agency that was, that was uh, created called Greater Seaside, which dealt, if I, if I understand correctly, dealt with uh, holiday um, thoroughfares. 
And so that, because we are still collecting, uh, it's it's closed now. People aren't being taxed on this urban renewal agency anymore. But we still are taking in some zoning um, for tax revenue for this, but it's still, it's still open. Um, which set up the same way this debt service takes in revenue and then and then uh, moves it to the Greater Seaside Construction Service account. Now, ultimately, when the Avenue S project kicks out, these two funds will be drained. So that that will be uh, they will be used for that project. But as it stands now, they're just collecting collecting funds. So um, all of that is to say. There, this year there have been um, two main expenses in the account. Uh, one is expenses related to the audit that we have to do every year. One is the Urban Renewal Agency's uh, membership fees to the Oregon Economic Development Association. Those are the two fees or the two expenditures that you'll see from this year. Uh, nothing major. The one. Uh, main expense you will see for next year is the Coho, Coho Homer project over by the ball fields off of Wahana over there. So that was one of the items that was called out in the original um, in the original plan for the urban renewal agency. So um, good news is has funded about two thirds of that project with grant funds. Um, the other third will, will come from the Urban Renewal Agency funds, assuming that this body is okay with that. We also expect that project to get started in just a couple of weeks. In fact, I think the City Council will be awarding that, uh, the bid on that uh, tonight at the Council meeting. The only uh, correction that I would have to that is if I recall, when we originally set it up this urban renewal agency, it didn't just deal with Avenue S, but it also dealt with bringing sewer in along the river on Highway 101. Is that still part of what we're doing here, or has that changed? Uh, there is not uh, a current plan to do that, but that's what my understanding was, and this, there's still a lot I need to learn, was it was for the economic development of the south side the area that was annexed into the city and that was certainly mm -hmm. a part of that and that's something that we're going to work towards but right now we've got to collect the money in order to be yeah. able to pay for that first okay i just remember that was kind of the main focus of this when we set it up so i just want to make sure that kind of stays I think, on I the think table. you and the rest of the council and maybe the rest of the improvement commission probably know more <laughs> about the history yeah, than right. zach and i do but that's i i have heard that i think from from Mayor Baru, one thing she explained mm -hmm. when I came here. So maybe we could do some research to see if Mark made any progress on that, or if that was. I just think kind the of main thing still. is we've got a we've got a. As far as I know, and I can talk to Dale, we don't have plans for that, but we're going to have to save up for that, and so maybe that is one of the projects we need to do is at least get the engineering done to know what that cost is. But I haven't seen anything or heard anything from Dale uh, related to that project. All right, thank you. Would, would that be in part of the goals, though, that are in the renewal plan? So it's drawn out there, but we don't have any active plans right. to, to implement right. it at the um, moment. So that is part of the email that we sent around this document, the second document. Uh, within has all of the um, kind of the projects and goals that this body was going to take on in 2018. Now that can be amended, again, by this body and the improvement commission. Um, but as of 2018, the last time that this, to my knowledge, was voted on, that's what the goal is for that one. So um, we're bound to some extent, well, to entirely by this document at that point. Yeah. Um, so that's a comment. I, I, I recall Mark saying that they couldn't do Avenue S until the highway work is done. Is that the same thing that you're talking about? Yeah. Um, uh, let that me, was ODOT, me, yeah. Yeah. You can only have one major project going on at a time. Um, somehow or another, uh, we'll actually talk about this at council tonight, the culvert project is going to continue while 101 is on, but we certainly couldn't do Avenue S because that's a long, long-term project. We also didn't come up with money to do it. 
So it was in the budget last year, Avenue S, the, the improvement, the entire thing. It was like an $8 million project. And there was funds from this um, urban renewal district that would have gone towards that. We're just backing that off until we get a little more idea of what we really should be doing. There, there was the total funds budget for the project. So for my training, I would look at that, oh, well, I wouldn't budget for something unless we had the funds. I'm like, yeah. the funds are there. And we asked where the money was. It was aspirational. That's right. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to come up with the money for the bridge. It was only 4.2 million. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I failed. <laughs> it's in the other bank account. The other bank account. We'll take it out of your city paycheck. Uh, yeah. <laughs> good luck with that. Okay, so then opening it up to public comment. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, can I get a motion for the budget committee to approve the fiscal year for 2024? Budget for Seaside Urban Renewal Agency. What can any of oh. Go ahead, make the motion, then I'll ask the question. Okay. Okay, motion, Bob. You need a second. Have a second. I'll second that. The motion uh, for the budget committee to approve the fiscal year 2024 budget for the Seaside Urban Renewal Agency in the amount of two point eight two two nine six five million dollars. And where do we see that on here? On the agenda. It's on the agenda, but I'm looking, I guess I'm looking at the budget figures, and since we just got them, um, I'm looking for that number. I will, I will add the, the ordinance. It's in the word, or not the word, the resolution. Um, it is the sum of ending fund balance plus COVID for, for the fourth month. So it's, 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 it's so that number is the addition of the four different budgets. Got all four together. No, it's not on the last page. This says it's the budget, and I'm not that, but that is not the budget document. It is, I'm a stickler on this. I'm sorry. It's the proposed budget for the Southeast Seaside Debt Service Resources, the South Side Seas Southeast Seaside Construction Service Resources, the Greater Seaside Debt Service Resources, and the Greater I, Seaside I Construction That's not Service the Resources. Document. Okay, so I'm going to repeat that. It's the addition of the figures. That, that's the total for the proposed budget for the South Seaside Debt Service Resources? It's the, it's the total plus the ending fund balance. So that's in, in the actual resolution. It's called the unappropriated ending fund balance. Which is not on this budget document? It's Where is it on this budget? It's synonymous with ending fund balance. So it, it will be down on this section. Okay. So that's six fifty. So that one's six six nine. That's the debt service requirements. And then the construction service requirements are six thirty three. That's one point two eight three. I need to see where the figures plus, are coming from. Yeah, I'm plus, sorry. Plus the ending fund balance. I don't know if those it's all listed in the resolution, which is just the totals of each one of those budgets plus the ending fund balance. And the resolution is in a different packet? Where do I see the resolution? Sure. I don't. On the back of the agenda, did you get that? Ready to. Where, where do I have an agenda? I never got one. I didn't either. Did anybody else like one? Tom got one. Thank you. Thank you, Sadie. I thought it was Stewie. Steve didn't get one either. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank
last page of this one. Do you have one of these also, an extra one of these? Very nice, thank you. So the, the total adopted budget that you're saying is 2.822965? Is that what you're saying? Yep. Yes. Yes, Well, I need more than a minute to look at it. Okay. There's some yes. explanation. Yes, yes, we haven't heard the enough about this. About what it's which part? I don't know the All this is is really I, tax I collection. <laughs> hey, Zach. The, the only question I have about it is where where is the 600000 capital outlay going to be going? That's or it is the culvert yes. project. Okay. Because um, that's really the only thing we have coming out of it besides the audit and the uh, other for this year. So we pay for the culvert and then we're reimbursed by a grant? Or how does that work? So the, uh, the full cost... I'd have to get the actual exact number. The full cost is like 1.1 million. We've got um, grants for, do you, do you know off the top of your head, Spencer? I want to say it's It's about 600. Yeah. yeah. I don't know the particular. Well, it's, uh, there's, it's in our council packet tonight, and we're going to talk about it. Yeah. yeah. And we're talking about that. There's about 400,000 of expense that we're approving, and you know, there's a grant of 600, but that's not the entire budget. Right. So, really, honest, in all honesty, I expect it to come in lower than that 600, but as a just in case there's some sort of a acceptable, yeah. acceptable overlay or something that they don't, they, they find in construction that they don't know about. Um, that would be and I don't. I don't. I don't anticipate that we would have to this to, to amend this. I'm going to close that by. That I don't know. That's a that's a great question for Dale. What was the question? How much was the was the pipe for the culvert? My understanding, it wasn't really a pipe. It's like more of an arch. Yeah, it's yeah. Like a, they call it an arch pipe. Right, so it's just like a 19-foot wide arch or something. something yeah. That, yeah. Uh, we purchased that to secure those at the front pipe. But I couldn't tell you this. Okay, so something I don't understand then, because <clears throat> I'm looking at this too fast and, and the math isn't working for me. 000. If I'm looking at this, the resolution, and it says that the total for the Southeast Seaside Debt Service is 696.76, I understand that and I see where it comes from on the budget document. But then, on the next one, the total Southeast Seaside Construction Services at 248 has, again, if you go to the budget document, part of that 2.048 money is a transfer of the South Seaside debt of 650, which is on the previous page. So I don't know how you add that on there. I'm not understanding that. So that ends up on there because, because it's part of the, the fund balance. So you're moving it from bucket of money A, so to speak, to bucket of money B, but it's going to remain in the second, in second place. Right? If, and we've got to account for 
the retaining of the fund. It feels to me like it's being counted twice. Right. Is um, it? No. That's that's the way, because the mechanics, the way that we're getting, uh, requires us to do. As you'll remember from the from the main city budget, our actual expenditures, expenditures from the city are somewhere around the realm of 40 million, but the, the amount that we actually approved in the budget or recommended for approval in the budget is, is closer to 90 because of the transfers that happened. So the way we're required to adopt it, the transfers end up double counting. The actual net effect though is something less than that. Correct. But when you're approving a budget that has a transfer from one fund to a the next fund in there that ends up being double counted but it's just a reporting number it's not a number that we obviously would plan on spending or could spend so it accounts for where that money comes into the uh, into the city or into the into the uh, the renewal agency and then it accounts for it being moved from one account to another account it's more the latter of those two things. It, this, this wouldn't necessarily uh, recognize the, the money coming in. It recognizes the transfer because the transfer is recognized as an expense. And so it's an expense in fund in the uh, Seaside Debt Service Fund. And, and then it shows. Becomes, it becomes a retention, the unappropriated fund balance in the second fund, the construction. I'm ready to vote. Yeah, I have a but motion. But I'm not going to vote yes. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Me. Okay, one opposed. And uh, it is carried. Do we need an explanation for the second motion? So the next motion for the budget committee to request that the Southeast Seaside Urban Renewal District select part four other reduced rate plans. Can you explain that just a little bit? So this is the equivalent of, um, this is basically the taxing authority of a seaside renewal agency, an urban renewal agency. And so um, by putting forward this motion, you're saying that you, you intend to take 100% of what this agency would have taken in, in terms of revenue on the incremental finance. I thought since it's a budget that we have to read an ad valorem statement. This doesn't. This is converse. not ad valorem. This is, this is different. What was in the, the motion from last year? Yeah. yeah. Word for word. Word for word. Yeah. There is no specific rate. It's because this is a different okay. method of financing. There, there's, there's not a set rate. It changes based on whatever the growth is of right. the yeah. existing ad valorem taxes. Okay. We get what's Somebody going. want to read that? You need to read it for, verbatim. Uh, I, I will move for the budget committee to request that the Southeast Seaside Urban Renewal District select part four other reduced rate plans and request for 100% from Division of Tax Reference ORS 457.4451. All second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you very much. Before we adjourn, I have a question. Did we not have minutes from the 2022 Urban Renewal Agency Budget Committee meeting that we needed to approve at this meeting? Their minutes are in here. Oh, that's no, those the, are from the um, oh, yeah. Improvement Commission. Yeah. There should have been minutes from last year's meeting for us to approve. The yeah, but there should have been minutes for the urban budget committee. Should we recess this for the moment? Mm -hmm. So, so what you're saying is that is not something that the urban renewal agency budget committee has done previously. Judy Ann oh. was the uh, previous. She did the 
record keeper. Yeah, what I would suggest me. as we look and see, um, I just would assume there should be minutes. It's a budget committee, regardless of an urban renewal district, unless there is a special rule for them. And I would think not. But if they weren't taken, there's nothing we can do about it. So I would propose to make so sure we have minutes of we'll this We'll look meeting. into going forward. Approved next year. Yeah. We'll look into that. <clears throat> okay. Any further comments? I do have one quick co question for Spencer. Do we have any kind of projections that you've done or can calculate right now on how quickly this fund will raise money? I, that's not something we, we've looked at, but mm. Zach and I can, can look at that and make some estimates and stuff like that. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, from I'll see if we can work on the project. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. How many the, years uh, is this going to take? Once we're at the four, five-year level now, that's what we expected where we would start to get bigger numbers. And, you know, it, it increased from 400 or something last year to 600 this year, 500 to 600, something like that. So it should continue to grow and actually get some real money now. If the Fed would stop doing what they're doing, then yeah, I would well. go faster. <laughs> okay. <laughs> go ahead and adjourn. Any, any further questions or comments? I'm going to adjourn the meeting at 528 p.m.